Catalyst is a game that was published through Annapurna Interactive, and it's the second game coming from the developers over there at Giant Squid, with their first title being their debut game, Abzu. That's actually going to be the next game we're going to be checking out. If you're new to this channel, I love rocking out with the PlayStation 4 version, so let's get into it. In the Pathless, you play as the last remaining warrior who arrives at this land that was once guarded by these deities known as the Tall Ones, pretty much kaiju level type spirits that shed dominion in this world. Well, that was until this one person deeming himself the God Slayer comes through and clearly was like, nah, that ain't gonna work. So over time, he just starts enslaving these guys with his negative influence, transforming them into monsters that I guess run around. Everybody else other than the wildlife are just corpses chilling out where they died at, with their spirits taking time to do some reflections. As the last warrior, you're attached with cleansing these guys of their evil influence and restoring them back to their normal selves. But you're not alone within completing this quest. You also have this bird, which is a reincarnation of the eldest god that actually gave birth to the rest of the titans you're going to be facing off against. And lastly, you have your archery skills that you're going to be using for a multitude of things more on that within the gameplay the overall objective is to bring the guys back to their senses and to be able to face off against the god slayer you know before he destroys everything Beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. The level of detail is outstanding, not to mention the scope of the land is very vast. For an open world game, the Pathless has a remarkable degree of verticality that's impressive as well. From time to time in this game, the drawback distance serves as a constant reminder of just how small and stature your character is in contrast to your surroundings. From a graphical perspective, the Pathless is gorgeous as it is vibrant within its use of colors and art design that blends animation with a sense of realism. For example, looking at these fields where it almost seems as if the individual strand of grass or seemingly cornfield looks tediously well crafted. Even looking at the waters of this game and how clear and fluid it is is something to behold, but I shouldn't be surprised considering the game's predecessor. The things that engulf the landscape and environments deserve acknowledgement and to be respected. The weather changes and the effects it has on nature is properly implemented, and the different terrains you're going to be running and soaring through all bring something new to the table so your eyes don't have to digest anything repetitive. Speaking of the changes to your environment, the moments when this ominous cloud engulfs you transforms everything and before long the player would have thought they would have been transported to another realm or something. I remember I tried to run away from it as to not be swallowed up, but there was no avoiding it. There are other little things within this game's world that you begin to notice, like the architecture of the ancient ruins for the most part that houses many of the puzzles to be solved, more on that in the gameplay, helps set up the fact that this land and denizens used to live here at one point in time. When looking at these huge monolithic statues, built in the images of some of the bosses that you eventually have to face off does well in setting up a sense of excitement, or at least for me. Seeing some of these statues ushers in a little bit of intimidation, knowing that the player will have to face off against these praised beings inevitably. Speaking of the monsters, each of them looks fierce and deadly when battling them, but on the flip side of things, each of them looks serene when they go back to being their original selves, which in most cases will have them transforming back into a different representation of another creature. But overall, as far as the presentation goes, this game looks very well crafted. The action set pieces never disappoint, and when it comes to graphical fidelity, everything ran smoothly. I'm only playing this on the PS4, but I'm sure on the PS5 port, everything looks godlike. Shoutouts to Matt Nava for gracing us with the visual design. He is the creator director and get this, the president of Giant Squid. Dude was and is one of the main pivotal people behind the upcoming games we're going to be reviewing this month. So the Pathless is an open world game composed of connected sandbox sections to put it simply. The player is able to walk, jump, and can fire arrows, however the Pathless is kind of weird at how it approaches its firing mechanics. You see, instead of accuracy and aiming, things are centered around the player grasping the concept of timing. There are these little diamond shaped things that frequent this land. When holding the appropriate button, a gauge will appear circling the emblem. The player can either wait till this meter fills completely before firing, or if your timing is substantial, you can wait till this meter gets to this halfway mark before releasing. If you do this, you get a bigger boost. Now why is this important? Well, 
Well, if you sprint, this meter will decrease, leaving you to experience the excruciating torture of walking incredibly slow. To me, how this game was built, I would imagine exploring this world would be a little bit more enjoyable at a faster pace. It's only shooting these diamond things that will refill your meter, and if you want to continue to sprint, you have to pay attention to it. But back to not relying on aiming. The pathless automatically locks on to things that is within your close proximity, so essentially the main focus is hoping that you're facing within the right direction so you don't target an unattended or unwanted target. There are a few kinds of diamonds that you will see. Of course you got the regular ones, and then you have the orange ones that will give you more of a boost, and lastly you have the blue ones that would catapult you straight into the air. Now while we on the archery business, scattered throughout the land are going to be some puzzles placed in a lot of areas. Solving these puzzles will have the player utilizing your bird companion to lift objects to drop onto switches, utilizing your bow to shoot through fires to light other extinguished structures, or all the above so your arrow can somehow hit this energy field that guards these crests that you will have to place into these tall towers. Some of these monolithic towers will require one, while others may require a multitude of them. So the hunt for these hieroglyphs is what will be occupying the majority of the time. To help aid you on your journey is this mask that the player will obtain at the beginning of the game. This gives you an x-ray like ability where you can see the aura of areas that may demand your attention. The areas that you will always need to go will always have this red aura circling around them, while helpful objects or areas that possess things that you will need, though optional, or objects that need to be moved will always glow golden. But after you get past the tutorial stage within the first session, you then cut loose into this world where it would be in your best interest to explore every nook and cranny. This would only help you out. A good example are these shrines that gives you these glowing orbs. If you collect enough of these and your meter is full, you get an extra flap or a feather. Essentially, your bird can help the player glide across terrain. While gliding, you can have your bird quickly elevate you vertically by the number of feathers that you have. You see, the object of this game is to cleanse the land of these gods, aka the tall ones. And if you need to find them, you can easily tell where they're chilling at by these domes of energy that you really can't miss. These domes will get bigger and inevitably engulf the player where you have to hide from these Roman deities. As far as your bird companion, well, he can only take so much of negative energy, so he kinda just flails itself into the distance where you must retrieve it undetected. But while you're looking for your companion, the tall ones will then stroll by like a manager at your typical retail store just looking for something to be out of place so he can do something uncalled for. But if spotted, you get those glowing orbs that I was talking about earlier? Yeah, you get those knocked right out of you. But to prevent that outcome, you have to hide by not moving when the viewpoint of these beasts are on you. When things return back to normal, you will find out that whenever the god's less energy is too much for the bird, it needs to be cleaned off with a good rub down. If you don't do this, your companion would not assist and instead be too scared to do anything for you. But back to the monsters. When all the monoliths are lit, it's time to confront these huge titans. You start off by chasing them down, then shooting them until it's time to enter the designated area where they will make their final stand. Most, if not all, boss battles have multiple segments to them, so it's best to be on your toes. This game doesn't have a game over screen, so when you attack too many times, you just get knocked out of that arena in which you're fighting your boss in. And if that happens, get up, dust yourself off, and make your way back to try again. Once you defeat them, you gain a new upgrade, and then off you go to another zone to do it all over again. The sound design of the Pathless is epic, especially if you're playing with some sort of surround sound system. One of the main things that takes center stage to me is how well of hearing the sounds of nature is implemented, making this beautiful world believable. Hearing the wind brush up against the trees and noticing how the sound will cease on cue when they are not is commendable. But this isn't the only time when the wind has been heard. Whenever I decide to be within a high altitude, the wind will make me feel the elevation and will give me a clear indicator that it isn't just by obvious sight of my location, but how intense I will hear the wind brushing up against me as I will go higher or plummet back down to the ground. The other sounds that I love hearing is hearing the bow release the arrow into the air just to hear it whistling to his mark. Or when hearing this huge miss engulfs you. This is where the tall ones pretty much have their time to shine. They come off ferocious with that inhumane way of growling. Wow. 
But then when nothing else is going on, I just love hearing the wildlife. But what I really have to give credit to is the voice acting. You see, I don't even know what language they're talking in, but it sure as hell ain't English. However, it doesn't stop the characters from sounding menacing. Let's take the God Slayer, for example. Whenever this dude is on the screen, um, his presence isn't the only thing that demands his attention. Whenever he speaks, yeah, he means business. But as I said before, the sound quality is pretty good. The music for The Pathless was done by Austin Winnery, the same person that did music for notable indie games such as the Banner Saga Trilogy, the Journey and Flow games, which is not surprising, Absolver, and that John Wick game. He also did music for a couple of films, along with one that I've seen called Grace. I better put that on the list of things to rewatch. But anyway. In The Pathless original soundtrack, it features an array of natural instruments being played that sets an atmosphere that consumes the player within its compositions. Specifically wood rings and string instruments for the most part, and drums for the most dramatic tribal effects to insinuate a feel of urgency. The various scores serves perfectly as the backdrop to the cinematic visuals that the player is going to be experiencing. What is really going to stick out to some are some of the songs that seemingly utilize vocal features that stem from a Mongolian influence. And a certain somebody who was with me came across my room and said it sounded like somebody was taking a massive crap in the background. But joking aside, the many layers upon layers of rhythms and sounds are just flat out amazing when it comes to this game soundtrack. Take this song Cernos for example. The song starts off with these drums and what I believe to be acoustic guitars that gave me somewhat of a Spanish flair. But also it sounded like it would fit well within the Prince of Egypt's OST strangely. Then over time it transitions into this part that has these blaring horns coming out like we just went from Egypt to straight up God of War. And not the one that people believe to be the first one giving off the misleading title. No, I'm talking about going all the way back to the original. So when you're listening to this song, the listener hears all of these changes throughout the song and then it ends on a somewhat soft and nice conclusion as if to say the journey is now complete. You have other songs that do the same thing but Cernos in my honest opinion is my favorite. Now during gameplay when I was just wandering around the land I love hearing this cello being played. It was like a common nonchalant jazz feel. The background music will face out quietly just as it will face back in. In between the moments where the music seems to be at its most quiet is when the sound design adds to the submersion of this world. Big ups to Austin Winery. He definitely has a good air, along with his team that all contributed. Links to where you can pick up the Pathless OST will be provided in the description below, along with the link to his official website where you can check out all his works. The Pathless was an enjoyable journey. The overarching theme of the title and how it's integrated into the gameplay and story was quite nice. The main villain God Slayer and his motivations behind his actions to me was kind of paper thin, however it doesn't detract from the message being given throughout my playthrough. The presentation of how this game looks is just magnificent, and as far as the gameplay, it's very easy to digest and have fun with. To utilize the game mechanics handed to you feeds your desire to go faster, or to just end up airborne delivering the feeling of freedom to go about how one may please. And before I end this review, I did mention in my Abzu review, and if you haven't checked that out, um, I'll provide a link in the description or it'll be somewhere on the screen where you can go ahead and check that out. But in that review, I did speak a little bit about how there was speculation that Abzu is somehow connected to the Pathless. The reasoning for that is the uncanny similarity between two things that is kind of hard to deny. So what are these two things? Well, that would be imagery and meaning. In Abzu, the player 
players tasked to reviving this underwater oasis back to its former glory by accessing this orb of energy at these temples. Whenever this happens, you will see life returning. Now, how does this relate to the pathless? Well, as I stated before, the player will have to bring these spirits back to how they once was. And whenever you do this, life comes back to the environment. But what I find interesting is that both games showcases an orb of energy of some sort, being what channels this transformation that seems to be made up or involve the inclusion of water. 90% of Abzu takes place underwater and is pretty much just talking about replenishing life to its environment. And when you look at the pathless, it's the same thing, except for it takes place on land. You see, the meaning behind both games is restoration. And I know it seems like a reach to base my suspicions on this, but let's take into consideration my second reason, which is imagery via these temples. In the pathless, you are brought to this temple which looks beautiful but resembles so much of what can be found within Abzu. You see, this is how this temple looks like in Abzu. Now let's take a look at how it looks like in the pathless. Tell me this doesn't look almost identical. It looks like it's practically the same place. Coincidence? I think not, but hey, it's just my suspicions. But anyway, with everything covered, I'm pretty much going to consider this a must buy, preferably if you can catch it on sale though. I would just buy it just for the experience alone. The Pathless is now available for PlayStation 4 and 5, Steam and the Epic Store for PC for only like $40, and it's also available for Apple iOS. But until next time, be safe out there, and peace y'all. And don't forget to like and subscribe, hit up that notification bell, and I, I gotta go.